Hey everyone, Psychryasin here, and welcome to another episode of the Psychological Problems Podcast. Today I'm joined by Flavia. Hi. Bob Meatbag. Hi. And Cynics. Our special <laughs> guest, Cynics. Cynics. <laughs> can hear you laughing. <laughs> I can't do it! <laughs> okay. See? I'm sorry. There. Remember it? Okay, never mind. So we don't hey. have to. We'll just use yeah. it. We'll just use it. You made a fool of me here. <laughs> it's what you always uh, wanted. Remember that when I used to just be quiet every time you introduced me and make me feel dumb? Yeah. It sure did. <laughs> It sure did. All right. So, today, I'm really crying. since we have the guest on, uh, I figured we could talk about stuff relating to the said guest and branch out into other questions and answers. Do you actually get questions? Do people write in questions? No, I mean like our own question. Like that's the thing. It's 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 open ended. You 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 come out with your thoughts, and then it goes somewhere, or not. Okay, great. Um, so. Oh, I'm starting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what I wanted to talk about is um, your sketchbook, Cedex. That's what we're gonna talk about, and and just 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 how it's false advertising. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> so, so cynics, you were talking about how I mean, you've said this many times. How it took you what six months to go from like noob level to to pro, uh, and I think that's uh, that's not quite accurate, because oh yeah, you want to fight about it? We do. I, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Okay. We what are having a with, discussion. But I think you were you were you were making a lot of you had a lot of mileage to begin with. Um, Did I? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I think so when you were talking about how, because okay, so for people who don't know, uh, first of all, um, I'm assuming you know Flavia and Bob Meatbag because they've been on every other psychological problems podcast, but you may not know. Cynics, um, uh, but he's an, he, I will put his, uh, in the description, a link to his channel if you're not familiar with him, and he made, uh, some sketchbooks, and they're really good, they're definitely right. worth checking out, I think, I think so, I think it's, it's a very good <sighs> tour inside. I supposed to show that it wasn't good, that was kind of. Point. That was a point. Well, in the beginning, you were still you're okay. I would say you're oh, okay. God, don't say that. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. It was really bad. Okay, sure. Anyway, and then uh, so so anyway, so Cynix started doing. You were doing a lot of anime pictures. Uh, it's pretty much exclusively just copying anime drawings that I saw on the internet, internet or that's, 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 this is my point. So, my point is, when you say you were a noob, I don't really think so. Because what you had done is you were already copying anime pictures, which can be, like, okay, that sounds, that sounds bad. Like, oh, I was just copying anime pictures. But... What you're really doing is you were looking at proportions and trying to replicate those proportions. So if you said, I was practicing my fundamentals and getting better at proportions, uh, it sounds a lot better. It does. If I just say I was practicing my observational drawing skills. Exactly. But and theoretically, it's not like I said I went from, you know, never having touched a pencil to being professional six months. I just said, I was still at a complete beginner stage. But you I weren't at a complete beginner out. stage. Yeah. I would consider that a complete beginner stage. And therein lies your bias. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. 
Your power. actual you bias. Your actual bias, actual bias, actual bias, actual bias. <laughs> I, I would say, well, you would be hard pressed to find people that would look at that first sketchbook and say, this is not a beginner, this is like a mid tier artist. Oh, I wouldn't say that. But I think okay. what so gets. We are agreeing that it is like the work of, a, of quite a beginner. Um, no. No. Oh, I would no, say I it's... almost tricked you into. Okay, fine. I mean, it's a work of a beginner, but. <laughs> it's <laughs> not the same as someone who hasn't drawn at all. Um, or not that much. Because I've true. seen a lot of them now. Uh, people who really don't have that experience. And. It's different. There's a huge difference between I draw in class occasionally and I really never drew. So That's true. Although I didn't draw in class. This is, for the record, that, this, this whole period of doing anime observation stuff really was just like a year, like the year before I got serious. It's not like it was like a 10 year thing or something. Yeah. And I think your progress was really impressive, and that's something definitely to be commended. And I, I do uh, feel like it's a lot easier to progress faster when you're older. So, like, anytime I hear people be like, I'm too old, you know, like, I'm 30, I'll be like, oh, that's great, because you can, like, pretty much zoom through all the, all the easy stuff that takes the younger people, like, two years or whatever. Because you're smarter, and you know how to teach yourself stuff, and you generally have more experience with everything. Wait, which which one are you talking? Are you talking about somebody like an adult who's never drawn before? Yeah, I think it's a lot. You can basically learn a lot faster if you're older. Basically, is my point that depends because it's not just like theory and stuff like that. It's muscle memory as well. So I've been doodling. Yeah, I think you're a, a little more, at least days. compared to being a little kid, you have a much more better muscle control as an adult. No, I would say a kid that has um, practice. Because it's like those kids that, that grew up doing martial arts. And then the difference between a kid do, who, who grew up doing martial arts and then continued to do martial arts and an adult who's never done any physical activity or martial arts doing martial arts. The muscle memory just isn't there. And it takes a lot longer to ingrain. You know, it's more difficult. Um, but at the end of yeah, the day, it's still mileage. At the starting point. Hmm? I feel like, uh, well, I guess it's debatable whether if you start martial arts at a t as a as a 10 year old or start it as a 20 year old well i know your your body is a lot more flexible when you're when you're young cuz um i found that <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> So I used to do like these these front about. kicks a lot when I was uh, a kid, and then much later, I think I was like seventeen or sixteen or fifteen, I I took up um, uh, martial arts, and then I could do those kicks much better and very high, and the rest I couldn't do well because I never practiced them. So that's good. Like I don't know. <laughs> I don't, even, I don't even know why this is that right. Okay, anyway, back to your to your point. Well, we got lately I've just been thinking a lot about um, the things we talk about. I mean, you talk about it, Cynics, in your videos, and I talk about it, and a lot of artists talk about it. Kind of these themes of working hard and, you know, talent's not really important, and you just have to put in the work. And what I'm seeing is... It's true, it's, I don't believe in talent. It's kind of different from what I'm starting to to believe. I guess my views have sort of shifted on that, and now what? I am in. Are you a, saying you believe in talent now? It's, it's not so much talent as I believe in people having an aptitude towards certain things and having an uh, an affinity towards. Um, certain skills some people are more like it started with the whole uh intuitive versus analytical thing but i started noticing it in other things some people have really good ideas ideas are just easy for them and other people um don't some you people don't think that's something that can be developed no like no i do skill? think it can be developed but i think the the 
the thing is that even though you can develop it, you work really hard and you'll get like kind of okay in it. But if you foster the things where you really do have an aptitude, you really go beyond that. I feel anyway, from what I'm seeing. Um, so you basically some ex- start with I just a higher don't baseline. Believe that's like a, yeah. a born or like I don't believe that's like an in place like I feel like that's still a learned thing. It's just kind of learned at a very young age kind of thing. I think we brought this up before where it's not just a higher baseline, it's also like a multiplier. Where it's like um like, you know, a person who who uh, who has more, I don't know, mileage or talent or something in let's say swimming, um, this person can learn things quicker they can do things faster they get the concepts much better than average people so let's say this person who's really talented at swimming is being taught by um, a swimming teacher and then there's a normal person next to them well something like learning to like uh, do a basic swimming technique might take a normal person like a week or so but then the guy that's really talented who's just somehow built for this or maybe they've had more practice they learn it much quicker like maybe half the time or something like that it's like I've seen that happen, or it's just like people. Possibly. I mean, there are certain things that are more physical than others, but um, it, I don't know. In terms of all these creative things, like I said, I I'm a firm believer that there's not really innate talent, but people are given innate confidence at very young ages, and that would, they think they're good better at something, and that's that. what we mistake for talent. It's I, just a confidence. I would disagree with that. Um... The reason is because, um, for myself anyway, it's been that way where uh, I never learned music, but I always picked music up pretty easily, and then it wasn't until I was in my, I guess, I guess before, like 17 um, or 18 when I ended up uh, going out with this musician person, and... Uh, I found the concepts were really easy for me to pick up, but I didn't know they were easy for me until I started going further and then realizing like, oh, I can, like, this is actually easy. It's easy for me to um, get the rhythms, uh, find what key the things are in, like, just basic things that the other people had been studying, and for me it was just easier, but for visual things I always had a lot more difficulty um, so I didn't feel like, well, I don't know, that was something that I learned or had more mileage in because I really didn't at all. Um, well, it would be hard to diagnose like exactly, but I still think it's a matter of just maybe for whatever reason that you were raised that in whatever little tiny circumstances happened along the way, you were ingrained with a more confidence toward uh, maybe musical stuff whereas as soon as like you, you know someone taught you one thing you felt very confident in your well, ability sinners consider this if it's if it's just con- uh, confidence then somebody who's i don't know like somebody who's mentally disabled should technically be able to do anything as long as he has confidence right but that's not true i mean there is a biological aspect of it we have yeah, biological there limits. Can't be, yes but some degree. Just the fact that exists I mean, already kind of I feel like all idea. things being equal, if you put kids together, like the one, it's like we nurture kind of, con- it's confidence in like a lot of children that we associate as like an art prodigy or something when it comes to like young children. At least that's the way I see it most of the time. But if you think about it realistically, there's no such thing as only nature or only nurture. You can't, you can't really separate them with kids, and there's no point in doing it, because whoever grows up, grows up with both. They have a biological configuration, and they go through life being nurtured or not nurtured. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty... I don't know, it would be really... If, um, well, I guess it would be impossible to really fully be able to diagnose everything about... But the point is, even if it's the case that, yes, um, even if your, your thing was right, and you just have experiences, usually the the ones before you're five to seven are going to last you you know yeah for a long time so then the thing is are the people we're teaching are they below that age because uh, if not they're already going to have certain areas they're strong in other areas they're weaker in um and 
that will change how they learn or what they can do in the future. Because um, if we were teaching kids and they were all two years old, sure, I guess there's a lot more room for, well, this person can become a lot of things. But even that, even with really young babies, you can see they have a tendency towards certain things. Um, I was watching uh, Will Terrell's video with his kid, and you can just see how he has this rhythmic thing going on. Like, yeah. he's, he's very... It looks like he would play an instrument. It would, looks yeah. like he would play the drums, most likely, but he, he has that feeling about like the things he's doing. They're very rhythm-based. And I would yeah. say that's an affinity towards rhythm. Okay. Um, rhythm, yeah. Rhythm's a... I feel like an affinity toward rhythm is kind of affinity toward most aspects of creativity. Hmm. There's a lot of, there's a lot of cross relationships between being able to understand rhythm and most things about either art or anything. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's... It's more just the thing that I see a lot of people, like, especially at a young age, I feel like he's obviously been encouraged. Like, if he was, maybe, like, any time he did something musical, like, there was someone there saying, like, don't do that, or, you know, stop that, you're making noise, or blah, blah, blah. Like, they would, you know, they would develop this kind of lack of confidence when it came to musical stuff, which would be very self-feeding. Or, sure. like, there's a lot of yeah. kids that you're raised, you know, every drawing you do, there's a parent there that says, wow, like, that's amazing. Look at you. You drew a, a, you know, a cat. And, you know, like, it's a dog. But, you know, it's, they'll just, having that confidence, I feel like those kids, once you start putting them in, like, a classroom where it's, partly they're excelling at this crazy rate because they're, they just think that they're better at it. They think they're good at it. And um, I don't know, it carries on through the later life because a lot of times when it comes to being older and trying to improve, people will be like, oh, well, you know, I'm never going to be able to do that, you know, or they get stuck in the same spots where it's really confidence is the only thing that's holding them back. So, I don't know. I like to focus on confidence as being the main well, factor. I think having confidence gives things. you more chances to do stuff. It's like, okay, you, you, have, you have confidence. You're more likely to do things. You're more likely to get mileage. Um, I think that has a role to play in it, where it's just like, okay, if you're really confident, you get more mileage, yeah. But I still, I don't think it, like, it's not the only factor. Like, there's just the human body, the way evolution works, the way the brain works, it's too complex to be just sure, confident. not the only factor. I can't yeah. say it's the only factor. I just yeah. think it's very, it's, it's an important factor that... Um, I think that's best, like, my, mileage is such an important it's fundamental it's like that that it's like the more you get the the more the better you get basically like in that way confidence plays a role um i i would caution because like the thing is i feel as though if you're just confident all the time that's fine you're more likely to do things but it can get into arrogance as well or it's that's just like true. okay you're confident all the time yeah, yeah yeah you can you're doing things but it doesn't necessarily mean that you can see your flaws and stuff like that i suppose that's where criticism comes in yeah, there's uh, yeah, there's there's healthy confidence which comes, which I would describe as the confidence in the ability to improve, which is the most important type of confidence. And then there's like a, a type of confidence which means confidence in your current level of skill, which I think is the you know which would be the one that falls into arrogance. So you mm -hmm. always have to watch out for that, where people are just like, I'm amazing right now. No one's better than me, or the people that are like. I know I can improve, you know, by doing stuff because I'm just very confident and this will help me improve and, you know, how to get better. So, it's, yeah, this is definitely true to everything. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about how, uh, for me personally, I was so against this idea that um, you're either talented or you're not. Um, when I was young, that was kind of the thing. Like, oh, you're so talented. Not Like, no one would say you worked hard in art. They would say that for music. I would hear people say, oh wow, they're really, they're really good at playing piano, they must have worked really hard, um, or they must have studied at a young age. But for art, it, it was always, from my experience anyway, um, very much based on talent. And then when I realized, oh, you can learn this, uh, it became a different thing, which was, no, you can learn pretty much anything you put effort into, 
and get it to a good level. Um, but then I think there's, at least for myself, I think I went a bit too overboard with that because it's not just that. It's a case of, yes, you can get anything to a good level, but each thing takes varying degrees of difficulty. Like, if you're trying to get a colorblind person to see, to perceive colors more accurately, it's going to be a lot harder than teaching someone who isn't colorblind to perceive colors accurately. And it's not that it's impossible, it's just at what point does it make more sense to cater to someone's own configuration? And I think right now, that's where I'm thinking more about, it's like, figure out what you are and what your strengths are and what works best with you and then um, whatever you want to do you can get better at it through hard work but it's not really just well work hard and anyone can do it because that sounds good and it's sort of true but it's not that sometimes it's just not worth it, it it's like you could spend 10 years working your ass off trying to learn this thing and you'll be okay at it or you could find the thing that you really really are good at or you really work best in and improve much faster and have more happiness doing that thing i i suppose i mean it's like let's say somebody who doesn't really have who's not really built for something tries to get good at it or maybe even try to attain greatness they'll probably they can gain a level of proficiency maybe even professional skills but because of the way of the way they're built or just maybe what they're good at they can only achieve professional level they it's like okay you, you achieve professional level but you never enter greatness and it's just like it's the the people who are built for something specific and they do the thing that they're good at and they gain mileage and they put in hard work they attain greatness whereas the people who don't really have that build you know they they'll, they'll struggle but they never really break through yeah there's i mean yeah i, I don't know i it's, mean imagine I imagine a person who can't visualize trying to attain kim jong gi level of skill kim yeah, jong gi vis kim Jong-gi visualizes super like, easily physical activities and creative activities it's easy to think of like examples in the world of like physical stuff but um yeah, it's I don't know. I was trying to think if we were I, to I get what you're saying, uh, up right now and become some kind of other like creative field. I don't know. I, I can't think of a good one, but how that would work out. But I still I don't know. I I remain I remain firm that there's a lot of it is is really based around confidence. But that's despite that's also there being some of factors that. of this, you know, obviously disability or colorblindness or, you know, lots of different things that could affect you. I think I, I kind of agree with your idea of confidence, but that's mostly because of how confidence is delivered and how badly it's delivered or not delivered to, to kids or to adults or coming from adults and stuff like managing confidence and raising kids is very, very... I don't know. That seems to be getting more and more difficult for people these days. It is. So we've kind of switched over from like a time where kids were given very little confidence and that was considered a good thing. And to yeah. now kids are given too much confidence. And it's kind of gone back the you know, into this other side where kids yeah, I don't, don't want I don't it. think there's a balance they, anymore. There's no They don't wisdom. want to do anything that they already feel very satisfied by everything. So yeah. It's like, yeah, there's a balance. Even games that are catered to, like, you cannot fail. Oh, yeah. Like, you play the, the game, but it won't let you fail because it'll just, no, do this, go here. Um, kind of stops people from learning the, like, failure has become something that you can't have instead of something that's just part of it. Where, oh, hey, I, I, I failed, and that sucks, and I'll try again. Um, it's now, no, 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 we can't fail. Because it's to. too hard to handle. Yeah. Yeah, because I want, yeah. I want my kid to be confident. But it's like, that only works if they, I mean, 
that's kind of the the end the last part yeah. i guess the first part is some degree of confidence in that yeah. hey it's okay you know you can try just try I think, I think initially it's about countering irrational fears because a child's brain at first is afraid of very irrational stuff like oh you're afraid of the dark or afraid of the i don't know the boogeyman or whatever kids are afraid of i don't i don't think they're afraid of the boogeyman anymore I don't um, know. they're I afraid of their wireless of, failing maybe not the boogeyman but this, the the concept of the monster in the dark, or I don't know. I was terrified of windows as a kid because I always felt like there would be some kind of monster outside the window. Well, it's a crappy operating system. <laughs> oh, you can't hang out with Cyber Team. I was going to make the same joke, but then you said uh, there is something out the windows in that or something. I, I, oh. I, it lost it. <laughs> I zipped that up. Yep. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I think initially the adults should be there for the kids to get them out of their, I don't know, crippling fears. Because if they're just left unchecked, yeah, the kid's going to have a lot of trouble growing and the kid's going to have a lot of trouble developing, um, I don't know, tendrils to, I don't know, I guess, adapt to the outside world and like, get information yeah. and assimilate stuff. Um, but afterwards, you still need to you as the developing child need to make things to be confident about if it's just i don't know spinning your wheels yeah i'm confident i'm confident are you doing it no i'm just confident i'm just <laughs> <laughs> i think like the idea of the parents helping the child overcome irrational fears i think some in some cases it's that i feel children are more fearless and that it's the parents who the reaction like it's like those kids you know they fall down and then they look around like they get hurt maybe they're <laughs> bleeding and then they're looking around to see what are people reacting and then when the parents scared yeah what the I kid do? starts crying but oh that's, no i got hurt yeah 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 that's that's what comes after because the irrational fears that i'm talking about that I, I feel like the parents should help the kids get over are things like um separation anxiety like after right after birth or like fear of strangers or because that's normal <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't know i feel like child development is such a fast and interesting topic it could be gone about forever probably one of the most interesting topics because it just deals with basic human psychology on every level yeah but like children, i think right? i think what kids need is i always i'm always a believer that like fear is such an important part of being a kid like you should be afraid just in general like that's an important part of growing up is like overcoming fear like on your own but like just being terrified of things like when we were kids or generally our tv shows and movies were like just terrifying or like horrible stuff they would show us but these days it's, yeah. it's gotten a lot more less scary i feel like as a whole and i always wonder how that affects the basic psychology of a lot of children these days because we're like we grew up with like you know all those horrible movies like uh you know return to oz and just horrible stuff and even labyrinth was terrifying to me when i was a kid but just like all this kind of slightly dark slightly horrible thing just imagery surrounding us and like all the media i just was scared of dark or you know, just scared of a lot of things and i feel like that was important though like parents were always scaring us i don't know why um it's, Kind of doing like that was just what parents do they scare kids and that's how you end up with anxiety <laughs> i know but i feel like it's it's there's something healthy about it just being fearful i don't know well yeah i think i think if you don't teach the role of fear to a child i think they grow up to be very brittle i think they won't know how to handle it as adults i think they if you don't if you don't teach them I don't know, basic stuff like death and, I don't know, illness or just life stuff, they will yeah. not be able to cope with them later on. Like everything you do or don't do or teach or don't teach to a kid will haunt them. Uh, yeah, I don't remember if I ever told you the story about like the, the, uh, the holiday party that I went to when I was like three years old here or that, you know, my parents still gets to. But it was like uh, just a bunch of adults, you know, drinking. It was like right next to Christmas. Um, so we, we were like in the Midwest or something like visiting relatives. But 
it was in the basement of like some house or some place um and all that you know unbeknownst to me at the time but all the adults were just completely plastered and drunk you know at the time at the time i didn't really understand you know drunk people or whatever uh, but there were a few of us little kids and i just remember uh they instead of dressing up like santa claus and you know like coming to surprise the kids like one of the adults dressed up like in the most creepy terrifying scrooge outfit and just like you know started like they got a cane and they were like rapping at the door you know like let me in you know just acting crazy and like that scarred me so much for no it, it was it was always this thing like they came into the room and they had this big cane and they were just walking around and all the adults were just completely drunk and they thought it was hilarious but like they would take the cane and like wrap it around your neck and like pull you closer as a little kid and they made you like say or like say a hail, hail mary or something you know like repeat a prayer just to make sure you were a good kid and then wow. just like it, wow. it was settled. So long. and then it, it was like also like they thought it was hilarious because he was like walking around like with a leash with like a little just a hot dog on a leash like i don't know i guess that was hilarious to them as well like, I don't know, really understand all the deep jokes that were going on. Um, but as a kid, I never realized this really happened. I always just assumed it was a horrible nightmare I had because it's it was just stuck with me in my brain. And I mentioned it, you know, like as an adult, I mentioned it like, man, I used, we were talking about horrible nightmares we had when we were kids. And I mentioned it and they were like, what are you talking about? That wasn't a nightmare. That was you know, that was so-and-so's party. <laughs> There's no way that was a real thing. But what was the, what was the, the point of, like, how is this a good thing? Because you were talking about fear being a good thing, and then you were haunted by this nightmare like that you it, only it realized was a certain real. Character. Like, you should be kind of, I don't know, in a mild state of this fear of, this Whatever. is what you're talking about. Maybe is that was not a good example, but I feel like raising kids with fear just will make them a little more contemplative, I guess. Well, con <laughs> contemplative, huh? The contemplative. I feel like it. I feel like it makes you a little more, uh, like you just kind of analyze stuff more. Maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like being being fearful just kind of makes you a little more analytical in some ways. But you do realize that you're talking to three people who have all been traumatized as children. I, I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, Raising I know. Raising children it's, with fear. Like I said, I saw the these bar? kids I don't know. Um, from Afghanistan. There's a thin, there's a thin and... line between, uh, like, you know, health, healthy fears and traumatizing and, you know, all this stuff. It comes to mind that, that stupid YouTube channel that's been in the news lately where it's just the parents playing horrible pranks on the kids I forget what it's called i don't know if you've heard about that nope. like oh, some I father of five or whatever i don't know i am curious but <laughs> it's <laughs> like some, it. it's been in the news a lot because it's like some some dumb family that just like tr basically terrorizes the like one of the kids and just puts it on youtube like as like it's a prank channel or something mm -hmm. <sighs> but like they're clearly it's clearly not okay like yeah. it clearly crosses that line into abuse yeah but, I don't know. It, like I said, there's definitely a line for a lot of this children's stuff, whether it be giving them confidence or giving them fear, or it's like trying to figure out the right balance of everything. And I think it depends on where you place, where you teach them to place the fear. Because if you're teaching them to place the fear, like of the parents, or in your case, for relatives, parties. I think it was. Well, it was more like it, obviously they were dressed up, so it wasn't like if a relative came at you. Like, and you knew they were a relative and they were treating you like this horrible way, just like scaring you, I think that would be horrible. But since they're dressed up as this, you know, this really caricatured version of Scrooge, I think they had like a really giant nose, which just terrified me. I still remember this huge fake nose they had. Uh, but yeah, it's just, I feel like that makes it a little more acceptable. But to this day, you draw tiny noses for your character. Yeah, clearly it, Trump, that's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure there's lasting psychological effect. Uh, but no, I don't know. I was raised also, I feel like I was kind of made to believe that I was like every little doodle I did as like a little kid on a scribble on a piece of paper, like was great. People always told me when I was a little kid that, oh, it's such a good artist you are, even though I didn't really, I never like really cared about art through, you know, my later years of being a kid, high school and everything, teenager. Uh, but I still like it stuck in my brain that when I went back to it, 
I was still confident. I was like, well, everyone told me I was such a great artist when I was younger. Like, I must be, I must be good at this thing. So when I went to do it as a 19 year old, I think I was improved maybe at a better rate because of that, who knows. So how did you go know. from that, from, okay, so everybody told you that your scribbles are great and you internalize that. And how did you go from that to, oh yeah, you know, my sketchbooks, oh, they're bad. Oh, this art is bad. Like what happened? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's, I, I'm, I like it that it's bad or I like being able to recognize that it's bad. That's, imp that's like an important part of, you know, feeling like you've improved at something is to be able to look back at something and be like, that's bad. And I know it's bad. So that feels good. Like that's, that's this. I don't know. There's something, about. there's something weird about berating the past instead of it's kind of, it's, it kind of sounds like, Oh, you're not, you don't want to praise your current artwork directly. So you're making it into a, that's true because I, if you praise the current one directly, then it's, you're not leaving the, you know, the room to keep like it, it's a, it's a difference between, you know, like being, like if you're berating the bet like the old stuff, that shows that maybe you're mentally that you're in an improving state. Whereas praising the current stuff is kind of it does, it's a similar process, but it says the same thing anyway. But it's more of a mental state of oh, I'm I'm comfortable where I am now, more so than just always thinking about oh my bad my old stuff's always bad. So that means I can you know always keep getting better. I don't know, I suppose if you frame it in terms of, oh, you're afraid of stagnating, therefore you induce anxiety on yourself, I suppose it's a strategy, but I don't know, I don't know how far. <laughs> I don't think it's imposing anxiety necessarily. I think it's just a healthy amount of critiquing, I don't know. I think it's good to be... Jo uh, I don't know. I like to joke around with my work and be kind of hard on it just because that's helpful to me. Yeah, uh, but I think... Once again, just how I was... Also how I was raised. I was raised in a family where teasing and kind of being very joking around people is kind of the norm, which kind of shows because anytime I'm friends with people, like a little buddy Cypher here, I just tend to tease them a lot more as I'm friends with them. Be a lot harsher on them. But that's how I show affection. Because that's so I've learned. Yeah, but like, I don't know, you, you have a YouTube channel and you do educate others. Correct. So, okay, so this, your mentality is based on how you were raised. Um, but how do you think, because the people who watch your videos clearly do not share the same history or the same, I don't know, social... <laughs> determination as as you do so where they're coming from maybe they have different um ideas about what bad art is or what fear is or what like because I, I feel like in a, a lot of your videos you make very general statements about oh yeah this art is bad yeah i don't really like it and <laughs> i don't know maybe you have I, i'm sure you have fans who objectively look at your work and say oh aspire the, the drawings, because I know, I know with Sykra, like he's gotten people where he will crap on a drawing he's made and say, oh yeah, it's bad. And then he'll get a comment where, yeah, you know, your drawing that you said is bad. I thought that was really good and I aspired to be that. Like, what do you think the impact is on people when you say, yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, this is crap. It, yeah. It's tough because, yeah, I was told that like early on by uh, someone who was an artist. I can't remember exactly who, but they were like, it's never, you should never say, like, call your work bad because there's always someone, you know, that looking up to it. Like, that is something, but I, I mean, to some degree, it's also, I feel like, you know, I don't want to, like, say, like, I just got to, you know, be whatever honest and whatever about what I'm feeling. So I'm like, you know, it's, I, I, I don't want to pretend that I feel differently about it than I do. Mm. It's got to be. It's got to be honest for the most part. I feel like that's more valuable in the end, not necessarily valuable as a as a like tool for helping everyone get better. But yeah, I think it's just just I, being I agree kind of very not like holding anything back is just more important as a just like. No, I, I I I agree with this part of it because but the thing is, you only now say the whole picture. <laughs> 
Uh, guess so? Yeah, because when you talk about things, you do, I don't know, offhanded remarks. Yeah, this is, yeah, and, and they sound very general. And because you have your confidence thing, they sound very, I don't know, you, you speak with authority and you... <laughs> Yeah, I don't think so. Because you don't really say, I, I yeah, you know, I, can I feel see the bad negative, about it. the negative effects that that can have. Yeah. Definitely. I feel like um, uh, maybe sometimes it can be misleading to people starting out. Yeah, no, that's true. But I don't know. It's, it's, it's tricky because there will be people that are at different stages that need to hear, like, different things. And it's, it's always been tricky when it comes to YouTube because you're making a something that's for everyone yeah. or at least something that everyone will see yeah but you no know, maybe it's it's impossible to help everyone with the same like the same advice i guess so yeah and I, I, think... I i feel mostly okay with it just because i feel like it's everything i say is generally just coming straight from whatever i'm thinking about it so in that sense i'm you know you do you do the best you can at just being vulnerable because that's the that's an important thing. And do you think um, from your videos what I get a lot is uh, mostly it's the 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 phrases like what you say like be confident. Um, it's just because um, yeah that's that takes a it, it's almost like you have to meditate on it or. Like really think about what that means to you. It's a it's a phrase that you say very like easily, but for for me anyway, it was something that it's like, uh, what does that mean? What does that mean to just be confident? Um, and then when I find out, it's like, oh okay, that's like I I feel that's what where you're coming from. Like try to uh, not fear failure and rather um, kind of if you make a confident line it'll look better than if you make a hesitant line yeah, even if the exactly. confident line the, is incorrect the greatest lesson that jackson pollock taught us that old alcoholic <laughs> mm. this confidence is actually appealing even if it has yeah nothing yeah else finding that out was like that. Oh, okay so that's what it is okay so <laughs> and then i rephrase it in my head so if you act with confidence, you're likely going to make something with uh, a simpler, more direct line, which will inherently look more appealing than something that is hesitant and wobbly sometimes. I mean, unless you're going for that. And so it's like, uh -huh, okay, that's the, that's one. The full that's form. One, well, in, in one aspect. Yeah. Um, but something I started to also realize is how important just self-knowledge is. Um, and for me, it was learning to appreciate the things that I already liked instead of fighting it. Um, so like drawing faces, I kept thinking, well, I mean, if left to my own devices, I think I would have just drawn faces all the time and gotten pretty good with it. Um, but what stopped me was when I started hearing people talk about always being out of your comfort zone, like you got to get out of your comfort zone. So I had a phase where I was doing uh, Scott Robertson drawings and then um, landscapes and then like I just kept bouncing around and I actually don't feel like that helped me that much because there's always something to learn. There's always something new and there's always like whatever you pick, you can go really in depth in it, but that's all that's all fine, but you're also not working on that thing that may be the one thing you should be working at so i view the comfort zone thing kind of like you need to like everything i'm finding is it's all balanced you have to be somewhat in your comfort zone and somewhat out of it enough out of it that you're curious and you won't stagnate but enough in it that you are still yourself and you're not trying to um be something that you're not i guess yeah yeah i can agree with that it's, yeah, may, maybe we get a, as people, well, I feel like this is a backlash from, like, the, the just the, the influx of, like, the concept art kind of movement where everyone's just obsessed with, you know, how good can you be at everything? Yeah. Where it kind of has infected all aspects of the art world. 
where maybe we're it's I don't know but yeah there's certainly downsides to just like that hyper competitive like you need to be able to do everything or else you're you're not worth anything you know yeah and and also like the glorification of a certain amount of traits like rendering uh, values proportions this and that but there's very little well I mentioned in a previous stream how there's very little emphasis in concept art for gesture um, but I don't know about when it comes to school, but outside of school, there's very little emphasis when it comes to ideas, I feel. Because a lot of the ideas are just recycled, and there's this whole thing of uh, everything's a remix, so it's okay. Um, but what I've seen are the people who really espouse that belief that everything is a remix don't really have good ideas. Um, I haven't seen them yet in terms of like really solid ideas when you truly believe everything is just, I'm just picking from this and that. Whereas the people who almost naively believe there is something original and it's within them and being just a unique individual and finding their own personal truth, um, I find those are always more interesting. So to me anyway, the everything is a remix thing leads you to looking outward and looking at what components are there and looking within is more, oh, I already have these components within myself. I don't need to do anything but reveal them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I've fallen into the, like, everything is remix stuff when I talk about design theory just as a whole. Because in general, I don't believe in, you know, the idea of, like, original concepts, even though it's a valuable thing to kind of think about. But... Um, I feel like it does get twisted into more of like a, into, well, it, when I originally thought about it, it wasn't supposed to be like, everything's a very direct remix. It was more of a way to incorporate that everyone has a unique visual library that's, you know, constructing everything you, you create in the art world is kind of dictated by that. Uh, but it was supposed to be more of an empowering and exciting thing. like everyone has their own visual library, which is exciting because it means at the highest, like no matter what level of art you take your art to, you like no one will be able to create the same things you can create, which is an interest, which I like that idea that no, like if everyone got amazing at art, they'd all be making, you know, slightly different things. Like in their way, they wouldn't all reach the same point. They would all reach their own unique points based on their history and visual library that they've built. You know, just a, as being alive. So, I don't know. There's, yeah, people certainly need to start thinking more about their their own unique kind of ideas for things rather than just a collective uh, kind of consciousness of design. Yeah, I feel you know, so I much is, is just um, reactionary. Um, yeah. Because it's like, oh, there are people who are told you have to be original and because of that they feel well they can't look at other people they can't look at reference and so they become crippled by that or you're told well only talented people can succeed and so you don't even try to work hard or uh, you feel like well I, I was told that and I'm not that talented so I'm not going to pursue this thing and they're all react re reactions to something like oh you were told this therefore whereas i feel like if we were all just just do whatever you want and whatever you feel is you then you don't need to worry about whether it's original or not so long as it's true to yourself it's fine and you kind of do away with the like as long as you're genuine um and authentic then you don't need to worry about whether it's original or not because it's going to be original just because you're unique and you're authentically presenting yourself and it's going to be i suppose a remix because you also are in a world that other people have been in it's so hard to strike yeah. a balance between these things because okay so you guys are talking about very potent, I guess, statements. Oh, you just need to do this. Oh, you need to worry about this. Oh, yeah, uh, this is meant to be empowering and whatever. And they're very bold things, but... Okay, so 
they're bold because you need them to have traction. But on the other hand, because they're bold, they need to be shorter and therefore they can be misinterpreted more easily, yeah. which is what happens. Like, okay, so you need to have enough simplicity in what you're saying and what you're teaching and your credo and everything. But on the other hand, you need to have enough nuance because otherwise they, they're not people are not going to get it and they're just going to go about yeah you just said i needed to to worry about being unique right so i'm i'm sitting on my head and drawing with a horse tail or whatever i don't know just absurd stuff i think uh in general that's the biggest problem we have like mostly in society today is that everyone wants to be all in or all out of every viewpoint yeah no matter what it is it's a social just political artistic anything it's a it's a world of very strong opinions and no middle ground for the most part but in the end i think most things kind of need to be thought of in a more open source way or every that's a thing symptom. You, that's a oh, symptom of something every, every creative idea is should be more like considered an open source thing yeah i feel like the, this 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 desire to to jump on bandwagons <laughs> is just a reflection of what people tend to be missing. Oh, you, you, you need yeah. to stand by a strong opinion. Oh, you need to find an idol. You need to, to you're, you're lacking a backbone. You're lacking a direction of your own. Therefore, you're looking to others to, I don't know, reflect greatness or reflect meaning upon you. And there's not, not enough real connection. There's just this, oh, look to others and mimic them. <laughs> yeah. There, there needs to, people need to definitely, everything should be in some sense unique to you. It's like, it's, there, we, we got this kind of whole tribalism thing that's been kind of taking over, I feel like, society. Maybe it always has been since the start, but where it's like people will sacrifice parts of themselves to fit into like a, a greater like viewpoint where yeah. everyone really needs to focus in on whatever is working for them. Uh, but it's tough. Like, I feel like everyone who watches any videos, our videos, your videos, my videos, it's like generally everyone's kind of feels like they're in some kind of middle ground for the most part. And they're trying to find how to like get to that next step of, you know, you know, whatever it might be, greatness, wherever their goals might be. And it's, it's hard because everyone's kind of struggling in the same, in the same bog and trying to figure out how to, what's the right step to get out of it. And I don't know. I think about I think about that a lot. This whole this whole mid, middle phase of art. Yeah. Whatever you want and to call it. There's so much like for me. Uh, I guess I'm the poster child for everything that you shouldn't do. Because <laughs> that's, <not, laughs> that's kind of true, cynics, and you know it. It <laughs> you but you've been made into yes. Yeah, certain people think of you like that. Yeah, <laughs> certain people, <laughs> some of whom may or may not be present. Um, I, but it's okay. I don't, I don't think there's some idea for what not to do. I it's think. Ten, I mean, I would cases, say you've achieved. I mean, you, you are achieving, and you are like you're. You're the one with the YouTube channel that everyone's watching. It's not like you're, you know. I think that's the, Jazza. The poster child but... of what not to do is the guy you know who's just playing Overwatch all day and not doing any art whatsoever. I don't know. I think I do have like a lot of just dumb ideas, but I but have to go good. through them. You run with your dumb ideas, which is super valuable. Well, yeah, I just have to go through them to see it. Uh, through, yeah, and I, I see that thing. a lot You're of people through or whatever you want to say. You're someone <laughs> who follows through it's with okay. things, I, like, I don't no matter like... how horrible they may be. Like, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I've come to terms with it. I don't need, like... You, it's honestly I, a great I, I get it. You're, you're nice. <laughs> but my point was that um, sometimes I think that's necessary to just build... Like, in order to build confidence, you kind of have to... If you have none to begin with, you have to get a sense of what's what. And for me, it meant doing a lot of things because I was too afraid of what if the opposite like um what if someone came to me and i really like drawing and they're like yeah but you don't know about painting painting's much better and then if i hadn't done that i i, I feel like that would have shaken me like oh yeah maybe maybe you're right i don't know 
um, and so I have to. And I hear that from a lot of people where um, some of them get to the point where it's like, I just, I want to, I want to know I can make money with art. So I'll do anything because I just want to get commissions because I just want to know that I could make it as an artist instead of, and, and then they'll, they'll, they'll pursue something that they think is supposed to make money instead of just, you've got something already that's really good, that, that is special, is unique, and you're not working on it. Um, because you need to prove to yourself, oh, I can, I can make money. But as soon as you prove that, you realize it's irrelevant. Like, okay, yeah, okay, I can make money, okay. Um, and then you get to go back. And I think the confident people kind of get to skip a lot of this um, I, insecurity of, well, I don't is, know. I don't know what's what. <laughs> this is kind of an interesting, or at least to me, it's kind of... Cause the problem, or at least what I'm trying, or what I hope, like, people will eventually get out of my channel just as a whole is, you know, just obviously reaching whatever goal they want. But it, on my, in my opinion, the best way to get them, like, into that is to just explain to them how important confidence is, once again, going back to confidence. But would you consider yourself a confident person? Um, no. Only in some, but, in some cases, I am. Like yeah, I'm confident you, in my to do like the thing that I consider confidence to be the cause of, which is to just see things through, which is the main important part that I want people to do is to be able to see things through, because that's what people can't do. So, what do you think brings about that that seeing things through? What's the trait that makes you see things through? Uh, for me, it's that I haven't heard well. I want to prove people wrong. That's one thing. Um, cause I feel like if there's one thing that defines me as a person, it's that I like to push boundaries. I want to see what is like, okay, okay, this is, this is here, but what's beyond here? And like, oh yeah. Um, so anime sucks, but what if it doesn't? Like, <laughs> it's just how far can you push it? And, um, I heard people saying like, I think Bobby Chu mentioned one time he's never seen someone create a style and it be any good. And he's just saying it and like I probably from his true. experience that's true. <laughs> but for me I, I, I took it like a challenge. Like yeah. is that really true? And it's from what I've discovered, kind of it is true, but but kind of not. Like there's there is a but in there. Um I have to find all the small buts. And uh, <laughs> it, it, I learned a lot by trying to prove him wrong in a way. Um, I feel like mm, that's what I have in terms of confidence is, yeah, okay, I'm going to try anyway. I have a belief that maybe everything's connected and I just have to see how it's connected. And if I do, I'll learn more truths. Um, but in terms of where I'm not confident, it's not really my own lack of confidence, but it's that I, if I hear anyone say anything, I give them the benefit of the doubt and I start to doubt myself. Like I have a lot of self-doubt. So if someone said, you know, um, pointy chins is a horrible idea. I might think, uh, <laughs> shit, that's a good point. <laughs> like I'll start to think of all the reasons why they could be right and then I'll start to lose confidence. Yeah, but you only see you only do this when people say bad things. When people say, "Oh, pretty chance is great." Either. No, that's not true because when Cynic says confidence is really important, I do think about it. No, but I mean you have a bias towards what people say about you. Because no one says nice things about my work. That's not true. Well, not no, no one. See? But a lot of people I admire don't. Oh no. It's fine. I am strong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a strong one. Um, no, yeah, but... Yeah, weird, I, I, I bet there is a bias towards negativity because I have that anyway. <laughs> yeah, especially when it comes to your own work. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> but um, I had a point, but I don't remember it anymore. <laughs> The, uh, I don't know. That's, yeah, it's... Oh, oh, you were asking that about what, what confidence... Yeah, I was just asking what, make, what makes you 
be the person that actually sees things through. Um, because, is... I don't know, I mean, you can mention, like, all those dumb, I guess I can mention things like 4chan or whatever, where they like to make fun of you or, you know, do things yeah. like that. <laughs> yes. all, I think about, all I think about is, like, the, it's like, yeah, he actually does stuff, which is literally the most valuable thing you can have in the art world, is the ability to, like, go through things and see them through. But that's, that's like not what, what you every... told me at all. You should say, you just said, do you know what they're saying about you on 4chan? <laughs> and then you laughed. Because no, he never says no, the whole I'm thing. Saying... <laughs> I'm saying. Like, now you're saying something very understand. encouraging. It's like, oh, yeah, I wish you had said that before. Like, they, yeah. They're missing the bigger picture of what's, what you're doing that's valuable. Yeah, but you point. never told me that. Yeah, the, the, but like I'm that's the true. thing. Like, I wish I can give people the ability to just see things, you know, to make see things through and like be consistent and like make things happen. Now he's dishing know. out you all the nice out, things. Like when you put out videos for like however many years, like once a week, I don't think people understand that. That's like I can I couldn't do that. That's like the biggest. <laughs> I don't like that takes yeah, I so doing much. That. I'm just I would feel terrible if you had a daughter because I feel like she would um she would be 16 and she would be putting on makeup and then she'd come downstairs and she'd be like how do I look and you'd say you look ugly <coughs> and then she would leave crying and then you'd be like but uh, uh, what did you mean? Well, I, I think she looks ugly with makeup. I don't think she needs that me makeup. She's beautiful without it. It's like, oh. I don't know. Okay, so, well, I don't know. I guess this, to fit into your little podcast, I feel like one of my biggest psychological problems is dealing with the, the whole concept of how I treat people that I, in, you know, that I enjoy being around or that I like, how I have this very antagonistic kind of side of me. Where that's like how I show, like, no, you're you're uh, you're a respected person in my brain. That means I can joke around with you and make fun of you, because I always hate it when that's like you know, people that don't quite understand that will view it as like, oh, I'm just being like I really don't like you and I want you to fail or something, or see it in a negative way. And that's always been a a struggle in mine that like you know it bugs me and I can't really con contain it or control it, but. It's it, it's also especially annoying if I'm just like a a dick to someone that I you know consider a friend or something, and then other people see that, so they're just a dick to that person, even though they don't do it for the same reason, which has happened a lot. Sorry, Sigrid. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like me me being like ah pointy chance, and then everyone in the comments will just be like yeah pointy chance. I had people <laughs> contact like, me no, and no, tell no, me, no, like, you, you Cynic don't said. <laughs> yeah, you don't Cynic understand. <laughs> you, you don't understand why I'm teasing him. <laughs> it's, it's really, that's it's how, really... That's how I was raised. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of backstory, which doesn't really come across in your behavior. Like, you don't, you don't walk around with a, with a, I don't know, poster board talking about the context. <laughs> Of what you're doing. It's tough. It's, it's, it's <laughs> tricky. Yeah. I yeah. I I guess it's confusing to people because obviously we've done plenty of podcasts and things, and I always imagine it's just like people will just like see like what what do they think? Do they think I just like come into the podcast as it starts and just be like, well, look at this loser, like, ah, it's like yes. dumb. <laughs> and then like leave right when it finishes or something. <laughs> But it's just, that's how that's how I'm used to talking to people. Like we're joking around all the time in between that stuff and before and after. And I don't know. I, Isn't that the first up. thing we did on the on the interview? We decided, or you said it would be funny if we th we acted like we hated each other. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the first day I met you. Well, see, I re I instantly gained your respect the first day I met you because you started making offensive jokes about something. I don't remember what, but I was like, oh, this guy, he's, he's all right. He's, he's That's always guy. been my icebreaker, or when I was young anyway. I would just, as, as a kid, if I wanted to be friends with any kid, I would go close to them and whisper in their ear, like, penis, or something. And then as they laughed, 
it was like, oh, we're friends now. And that's... <laughs> It's it's not as appropriate if you did it to a child now. Uh, man, <laughs> man yeah. <laughs> I hope you're still not going up to kids and whispering. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, that really makes me laugh. That I would do that. Just the visuals, yeah. Just the <laughs> I think it's pretty charming. Yeah, just the outrage. But if you're an old man, it becomes okay again, right? Yeah, I think like that's so. a thing. That's I a think thing. So. Yeah, it's back around. Yeah, it goes, it goes all the way around again. Um, yeah, we had we had a lot of good times. And those are those are the things. <laughs> but that's the thing with you, cynics. You you can clearly you can be serious, so you do have that side to you. You're not. It's not like you're you're faking it or anything. I'm not faking anything. That's um yeah. I'm I'm this is uh, this is me. I can be serious and when I'm I'm joking. That's I I don't know. I I don't feel like I've ever been remotely faked on anything. Yeah. Just who it's just whatever. But I think the face you tend to show people cuz I don't know when when we talked the first time I think it was on a hangout and you were super, I don't know, erratic and stuff. It's very different than the way you're talking now. Uh, yeah, but that was is that when he was calling you very much? Yeah. Quite <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> what Wait, you what? used to call her? <laughs> yeah. Sex. We, yeah. Speak it out what? loud. I must. I must have had so much of your respect right off the bat, according to how you <laughs> welcomed me. What, I don't even remember what I do, call you Labia or something. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> Isn't it not your name? <laughs> and my name is Crotum. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. My, my, it's, it's, my, my personality has gotten me into trouble. Maybe yeah, I, well, I'm, I'm really wondering how you proposed. It's not something I'm like, oh, this is... <laughs> oh, oh, no, I can be serious. I'm, I can, but I, oh, you should feel bad for my wife. She, see, but I feel like the reason I proposed there is because she's, she kind of has a similar trait where she just jokes around with everyone and she's had a lot of her friends that hate, like, can't stand it either. So I'm like, hey, we can just be giant assholes to each other all day long. And we both understand that we both care about each other. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 It it makes me so sad when I'm like myself to people, and they're just like, "I hate you. You're such a jerk to me." Blah blah blah. I'm like, oh, I was just to being nice to the only way I know how. <laughs> Fear is important. <laughs> I was trying to make a good impression when I called her Labia. I was like, look, I, I like her. She's nice. Labia. <laughs> I like Labia. She's <laughs> nice or she's floppy. Oh, oh, did I call her floppy Labia too? <laughs> no. No. Because no. That, that sounds like something I would say. <laughs> hey, you want to go out to eat? We could go for roast beef sandwiches. <laughs> no. I don't know. It's yeah. <laughs> Somehow this went from teaching children to roast beef sandwich. <laughs> I wonder what the youngest person is who watches Oh don't these ask that. Psychological problems podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Hi I'm eight and what is this? That's gonna be all the comments. Yeah. Assuming, anyway. assuming people, because all the comments would have to have watched this much. Of One the hour and ten minutes ish, almost. Yeah. 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 They're not gonna get that far. Yeah. Some, yeah. some will. It's not that long. Hey Bob, what about you? Do you think you're a confident person when it comes to art? Yeah, let's talk about this. Oh, yeah. Boy. This goes deep. This should finish. <laughs> this should wrap it up. Oh boy. What? Really? Uh, it depends, because I'm extremely intuitive. 
like when I'm on, um, I have been told that uh, I am very dominating in that aspect of my abilities. Um, but the problem with me and intuition is that it's fickle. It's so it's like when I'm on, I'm I can do things way beyond my normal capabilities. Um, but when I'm off, everything just kind of goes to shit. I can't tell what's good, what's not. Um, I draw things that are just terrible and not up to standard at all. Um, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, so, I think so for me, it's just like I'm just, I'm just not consistent, you know. So that really gets to me because it's like, okay, I, uh, people see the best of me at times, and I, I assume that they see um, the better side of me on the streams or even when I did the uh, the prompts and stuff like that. But what they don't see is the failures, and I have a lot of those, um, especially when for me, I'm when like I'm drawing my own stuff, um, especially the first iteration, like just the sketch phase or something. I draw things that are just, just like I can tell. It's like, oh, these, these these feel really good. But when I try to do it again, or when I try to replicate something, I I've, my skills go down the shitter. So you know, for me, <laughs> I mean, that's all about that. <laughs> oh gosh. But yeah, but um. <laughs> so yeah, I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, I don't know. I I would say, in some in some ways, I am very confident because for me, it's it's like my own art is like in a way I've discovered a part of myself in my art. So I always had that as a source of. They still have a long way to go. Okay, but those times where you're drawing it, you, you feel like can you can you just. Like call that confident, okay. like confident day. But those times confident where you're doing day, it, I'd you say it's a, conf- like, it's a confident you, moment. Can you just like call that confident, day. like confident day? I uh, said that. Would you would, would you, you quantify would you that the thing the thing that separates like, good and bad like, as the level of confidence at any given time? No. No. It's would just, you would you feeling. call the thing that makes like one day good or one day bad just your level of confidence, which is which falls into my subconscious? No, you wouldn't call it that. If it's something that I've encountered in my subconscious before and that I've drawn a few times, I can do pretty well. But that's not confidence. I'd I'd even go so far as to say that it's a crutch. Because if I just rely on it, because what it's done to me, and this says a lot about my personality, is that I have a very black and white view of the world. And um, it's like, okay, I, either I'm good or I'm terrible. Either, I, I, either, either I'm worth something or I'm not. You know, and that's not confidence. And that's a psychological problem. So it's, it, it just, it depends on the person, I suppose. I wasn't trying to be like confirmation by Mm-hmm. That's my answer. I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to I'm genuinely asking. I wasn't trying to be like confirmation like, biasing. Like, what, that's my answer. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to figure out the solution, or you know, like the best way to figure out, like, because that that stage of you know something you can't apply bad, something one good. Like, what is the how, how's the best way to really improve, have identical uh, make every day kind of better? It's true. I just like to hear as many different things. Yeah, I think I think that's very valuable. Like, oh, to just it's true. <laughs> I just like to look up other how other people many are dealing with kind can. of similar, kind of related. But I think everything should be taken with a grain of salt. Yeah, and I mean, even trying to teach you has been because <laughs> 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 the thing is, um, I started when I started trying to teach uh, Flavia <laughs> art personally, one on one. I was teaching her based on what works for me, and it was not working at all, really. I, it was kind of working in that, I mean, you did the value study thing you got. Yeah. But anyway, the point is, it really, like, that was the first time I was really confronted with, oh, this doesn't, like, everything that works for me doesn't work for you. And the things that work for you don't really work for me. And wow. Even People basic sentence that, forming, like yeah. how, how you talk about things when you're trying to communicate with me, I have to retranslate that mm-hmm. to my own retard language. <laughs> the, just to make sense of it. And sometimes sometimes he'll say something and then months after <laughs> I'll be like, I guess after just doing things pretty much backwards and stuff, I get it now. 
<laughs> that's what you meant. Yeah. yeah. That's that would, I think that's one of the most fun parts about doing YouTube stuff. It's like just seeing what resonates with having yeah. such a big that's, that would, I think that's one of the most fun like parts the about, about doing YouTube stuff. It's like just Seeing what resonates yeah. with having such a big cross sample of I started people out with and seeing really if, like the way you sure talk about certain things resonates. My, and my message doesn't. gets across to as many kind of people amazing. as possible. And now I'm starting to think maybe that's the wrong approach. Maybe it's not trying to connect with as many people as possible, but rather just saying your point as as well as you can um, as it pertains to people like you and trusting that people who don't benefit from it will leave. And the people who do will stay on, and they'll they'll sort of self-regulate. Yeah. Um, Cause, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like the problem with uh, YouTube is everyone's invited in a way. Um, that sounds bad, but I feel like if it was a school in the past, you would probably want to know who the teachers are and who you like. Like, oh, I like this teacher because they teach the way that works for me. Um, but it's scary when people are starting out and they're a blank slate and you realize they might watch my videos and if they're not built for this or if they're not getting this the right way, they could waste a lot of time on them. I guess, I don't know, I'm afraid of that a lot. Just really? misleading okay. people. I yeah. Don't care. F I know you don't care. I know. F those people. Really? Okay. I think I don't, I don't care. I've never even thought about like, F them. That's what I do. F those people. That's all I think <laughs> about. I, I, I've, That's I, all I, I've I never even thought about wasting, like, am I wasting time? Wasting people's time is less of a concern oh, yeah. than. What do I care? How much time I waste? Because that's that's kind of the thing with therapy as well. Like if you do. If you're not a good therapist, you can do more harm than if you didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if when you're a teacher, it's kind of a similar role. Oh, there people are looking to you as a guide mm -hmm. for whatever whatever issues they're trying to solve. Sure, they're they're trying to solve it on their own, and I personally would expect them to have a mind of their own, to have discernment and I don't know some level of processing reality um but on the other hand because i don't know i guess the 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 age limit for people who start learning art and stuff is lower and lower and lower so at some point you're dealing with i don't know middle school students like this yeah. is not you can't really just yeah you're you're grown up adults you can do whatever now <laughs> you know, like, yeah i don't know it's hard to afford to have empathy for that many <laughs> yeah, yeah but who, and I don't your, know. It's hard to afford that. Your message is probably better than mine because mine is pretty crippling when I think of different people. Oh, what if? But what if they're not getting it this way? My, yeah. um, the way around it has been just disclaimers. Like I will try and make sure everyone knows this is just one way, but probably the exact opposite would work as well, um, and stuff like that. But it's, I still get people who will say things like, uh, oh, I was watching one of your videos and you were talking, and I don't use reference because you talked about never using reference, and it's like, wait, 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 I, no, <laughs> no, I, I did not say that. And it's hard to, I don't know, get <laughs> the yeah, accurate I, thing. It's still that, that trap with her, that kind of thing where I, I'll get that in videos where they're like, you know, the yeah, and like. I'll, like my it's still that, that trap loop or like, that kind of group thing know, where I'll, I'll get that in videos where they're like, you know, they'll mention something. I'll just, like, like my anatomy coke tips, tips, they weren't supposed to be like, to be like this, this is how you're going to, you know, just, this is all you need to be able to draw everything. It was like I named it quick tips on purpose because I wanted to be like, here's one take on like certain things. And then people will respond like, well, you know, Richmond Loomis does it this way. And I'm like, yes, you know, use them all. That's the kind of the point. Use as many things as you can. Find what works. It's not like I'm not trying to make it so this is the way you have to do things. I'm just trying to give unique takes, which is the most valuable side of YouTube is being able to hear from different people and kind of being like, oh, that's, a, that's an interesting point of view that I'm never going to follow or that's something cool. Yeah, especially younger people, they're looking for bandwagons to jump on. 
No. So they're less about. That's a bad thing. Yeah, they're, they're less about compiling and finding the balance and finding the synthesis no, of that's not the more than one source of knowledge and everything. They're just. I I'm team cynics. I'm team Loomis. I'm team whatever. <laughs> more about identifying with someone yeah i know it's it's tricky i i do think about it a little bit and try to i don't know if i know there will be those yeah i know it's it's tricky i i do think about it a little bit and try to I don't know because yeah. I know there will be those people I try to incorporate I try to incorporate more than I would necessarily otherwise you know, like, hey, yeah. let me put in a little bit of everything because I know you're just going to try to come to me for everything instead of coming to me for just a couple of things oh well it's fine. yeah I think yeah I think you mentioned it in the previous podcast about how all learning is self-learning in the end anyway yeah Got every every education. You got to be responsible for your own <laughs> education. I always Never wonder about that. It. Like, is that more <laughs> motivational to the people who need it or not to understand the odds? Because I've heard uh, some people. I, I mentioned that in my last pitch because I saw that it was very motivational to me when I was, you know, in that. Like, uh, that's, 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 I, I, I mentioned that in my last yeah. because I yeah, saw that it was too, very it was motivational kind of scary, to me but, when I was you know, you know in that will, like you, just even starting even out whatever trying you know, to get like good like, where it's like yeah well, no like cool. one in you know a hundred yeah, so, people yeah. will be oh, even yeah, get to like a professional level it's like eh cool I just wonder does everyone think I guess I'll you know because I'll be one of those they said this in school too when I went to animation school it was like oh you know most people don't actually become uh successful people see that 90% of our schools students just don't go anywhere don't make it into our world yeah, though, yeah. there's a 90, lot of other of jobs that are school students just don't up the, go anywhere. Don't like, make it into You go in a world. studio and you'll look at, okay, there's a receptionist, there's a janitor, there's a, <laughs> there's like all these other auxiliary positions, and then you have the concept artist <laughs> group, but there's always the, oh, and here's the, the render farm, and then it's just like thousands of people, and... <laughs> what are the chances? Where where do you think you're gonna end up? Uh, <laughs> well, I've always wanted to be a director. No. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be that. This is such a weird mentality for me. Is like, it? Yeah, because I don't know. You guys, you guys are talking about this, and you seem to share <laughs> experience with this. But for me, it's very novel. Oh, you think about like you spend time thinking about whether you're gonna make it or not or whatever like as if that's an event in and of itself kind of outside kind of oh there's a timeline and it's pre and you're just spectating it but i don't know the way i grew up it was more like no you're in this and whatever you do whatever steps you take of course they're adding to that but you don't spend that much time pondering whether making it like making it isn't a thing is bridge look we we put log in is bridge <laughs> try it don't worry it's about making it it doesn't yeah. matter yeah <laughs> that's not a romanian accent <laughs> at all no that is not a romanian, not a romanian accent <laughs> house is built <laughs> look cargo cargo downhill we make it Yeah, I'm not putting as much <laughs> we faith make... in it as maybe you're thinking. Because I do think, like, okay, that's what they're saying, and that's uh, probably true. Yeah. But there's got to be an ex... Uh, that's the thing. It's like, oh, there's got to be an exception to the rule. Yeah, I guess I guess for me it's just, it's just strange to have this in your mind space when you're developing. It's like, oh, you're thinking about a, a situation that is within your control, but you're also thinking about it as if it's already happened as if, as if it's a roll of the dice whether you have like what you mean as opposed to it's all about how much work you put in yeah yeah because this is and even the the talent thing like oh you how you were told oh this is talent or you're talented and, and stuff and i suppose because i didn't really 
grow up around I guess I did have artists around me but they, they weren't really oh this is a an innate thing or this is a predetermined or oh you, your child is talented um, sometimes we were told like I was told that I'm smart but scatterbrained like it was never um, praise or uh, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> or shitting on on your traits it was more of a description so you kind of always got a an assessment of what your configuration is not yeah you're you're making it or you're not or whatever it's like you didn't put in enough work here's your grade or here's your evaluation i think that would work so much better if, if there was always that balance because it yeah. would it would make you feel like a type instead of uh a label because if you're if you're someone who's a loner and then it's like oh you're a loner that's very negative but if you say this person's really independent and is very self-sufficient but doesn't really work well in a group yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, oh okay like, that makes yeah. more sense okay you're not just here's the label you're antisocial and then the most you do with it um i suppose if you receive labels like this when you're young the most you can do with it is wear it as a badge of pride but still identify with it and yeah. not, not look further yeah, i'm a loner i'm a i'm cool i'm it's like no yeah, this can, isn't cool yeah. or gross or bad or anything it's just it just thing. is yeah yeah and it sort of makes it so you don't bother thinking about what you could really do with yourself as much as how do you either fit in or choose not to care yeah hmm. it's a lot of i don't know that's I a did. good point mm. i like that yeah <laughs> you guys did it because yeah even if someone says oh you're antisocial they never say you're intro you're not extroverted but you have a rich oh. internal life yeah it's nothing really usable yeah <laughs> And I, I think kids nowadays are not really given much usable mm. information. They're given a lot of... I don't think it's just nowadays. That was my experience as well. Like People yeah, threw I... terms around a lot. It was you're this or you're that, not necessarily... Um, and I mean, for people of Indian backgrounds, destiny matters a lot more. <laughs> no, this isn't... Hey, either you've got it or you don't. Karma. You don't have it. Maybe better yeah. luck in next life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the ultimate. Like, not that I was that, but <laughs> yeah, but the, this is, to make it. it's not even it's not even it's not even funny. It's, it's little so bit funny. funny. You know, you have a child. He, he has how many years ahead? Maybe eighty years in his life. It's okay, everything. So funny. tell life him is he's not gonna make it. <laughs> then you have for at least. Let's say you are going to only live 40 more years. You have 40 years of laughter seeing <laughs> this guy. He won't make it. <laughs> That's a Bob joke. <laughs> you don't even need to pay for television. Yeah. Pay. Do they have television? <laughs> I don't know, but this is... <laughs> yes, I... Come on, they must. They have Bollywood. But and what do they watch it on? Do they? <laughs> they? This is terrible. We don't know anything about anything. Yeah, we Disclaimer. don't. Disclaimer. <laughs> Mildly <laughs> Let's talk about what? Mildly uh, <laughs> What we do. Have you ever heard the case of someone that worked, worked as hard as a person could work at a goal? Yeah. Never reached it. Yes. yes. Have you ever heard the case of someone that worked? <laughs> but that's what I'm afraid of. That's, that, that, was, that was the whole point. That was the whole it. point. Maybe they weren't meant for that. Maybe it was just. <laughs> I, just I want to hear that. What? what where, where? Where? Who? I wasn't asking sarcastically. I oh. I know. It's, I just I never hear that story. That's why yeah. I wanted to hear. I wasn't asking yeah. sarcastically. I went, I I went to school with such people. Of the guy who just. Uh, Grinded harder than anyone else. It's just, they were still kids. I mean, no, I went to university. Universe. No, you can't say you went to school with them. That just makes them. They were still kids. No, I mean, I'm talking about like a whole lifetime. In their twenties. A whole lifetime of like, I'm gonna draw. In university, the coolest style. Not doing it. Not not working. Literally, it wasn't working. 
That's, that's, not, that's not enough. I want to hear, like, the 60-year-old man. The what? Man? The 60-year-old man. Yeah. I that's don't that's not that's the guy not who I want to hear like goes fifty nine able. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that. I think yeah. there are plenty of them, but they don't really oh, end up I at know. a point where they I've tell their that. stories. I guess. And then and then people yeah. don't people who hear maybe they do tell their story, but who's gonna pay that forward? Who's <laughs> gonna no keep? I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's the source of the whole talent. Um, <laughs> but no one thing listens where it's all kind of eating, it's let's say bad. you really eating tried bad. and then you failed and you're an adult. What are you going to tell your kid that you're a failure because you didn't work hard <laughs> or that, that some people terrible. just aren't talented <laughs> and it was not meant to be? And it's only certain people who are the select few who are special who can uh, accomplish this. Because in a way, if you do believe that anyone can do it and you're an adult, and you have children, uh, remember what we're talking about with dreams. Um, <laughs> so, you're an adult, you're, you're a parent, and then... Um, Guys, this, I was trying to be uplifting you because... No, because I'm like, Mommy, don't worry, that's kid, true. you work you're hard enough, you can see your and your goals. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's now. I'm, I'm trying to give them some food. Your to to now they're all gonna be like, "Well, screw this, screw this." I'm giving up now. Sure <laughs> was, sure was, and I achieved that dream. <laughs> Kids, if you work hard enough, you can achieve something. Yeah, but they're gonna be frying themselves to sleep. No. Oh. Come on, who's gonna get this far? Your poor viewers. <laughs> Your viewers well, they're going to be life. crying themselves to sleep tonight. But this isn't live. That's true. Like, they could watch this at any time. Well, they probably already yeah, cry themselves they... to sleep. And they're sleeping right now. <laughs> they just wait. They wait until wherever they are in the they're... world, it's really late. I know, but yeah. do they? Go to bed, Steve. Alright. Do we have anything else yeah, to talk about? Go to about? bed, Steve. Probably. We... Everyone wanted you to make me cry and stuff, and so I'm not crying. Oh, is that what they Probably. wanted? We ain't, they everyone wanted you yeah. to make me cry and stuff, and so I'm not crying. They wanted the deep down, They want, dark, they wanted, dirty. yeah. They wanted the they wanted inside the actor's cry. studio. They wanted to hear about my disturbing childhood. They wanted the deep down, dark, dirty, psychological. They wanted to hear about my disturbing childhood. And how, uh, I don't have to see the problem is, I don't know, my channel is pretty good. It's, nothing's perfect, but as far as, wah, wah. it's pretty fun. Yeah. My, uh, <laughs> it's, nothing's perfect, but Honestly, as far as things go, a it's pretty kid, fun. But... <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's mostly, mostly, That's mostly my I was a miserable yeah, you see, the, kid. The but problem wasn't that, with my childhood. My I childhood was That's great. Really I sucked. This is my personal <laughs> trait. <laughs> like that. Sounds weird. Yeah, that sounds like a perfectly healthy person. <laughs> no, I feel like my. When you put it like that, it sounds I had weird. With society as a whole. Just my, no, I feel like <laughs> my my general problems. childhood is good. I had problems with society as a whole. My house was a just good in spot. terms of I, my <laughs> society problems. My house was a good spot. It's the, my views. World. Every time I looked around at the world, I, I was like, miserable people are not job. smart. They're not is getting the, it done. Uh, the, the They're not making a good before. world. I think that was my main miserableness as a child. I had huge problems with authority. The biggest, the biggest authority problem. I think why? That's why? Why do you I think you had such problems, problems with authority? That guy dressed up as <laughs> the biggest, the biggest authority problem. He was your, your version of authority. It all started yeah. with that that guy dressed well, up as Scrooge. It always does start with Santa Claus, right? Does it? That's that's everyone. That's where we're yeah. trained as children. He's, well, technically, it it always does start with Santa Claus, right? That that's that's everyone. That's Christmas. where we're trained as children, not to trust adults. North America. 
Yeah. <laughs> this is so weird to me. It's very no, Christmas. alien. <laughs> Christmas is where we learn. Uh, I guess it starts with Santa, Santa Claus. Oh, well, you know, when I was growing up, Santa Claus was banned. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have any effigies with Santa Claus or anything. You had to work around. They don't do effigies of, of Santa Claus. I don't know. Don't they That's have not it? how they celebrate Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how they do it here. I don't know. Don't they have them on like Coca Cola bottles and stuff? And yeah, but That's not a, effigies. Effigy. Well, effigies. Effigies are the things you burn. Not just an effigy. It's just a representation on a thing, a uh, symbol. Uh, In Romania, all representations are effigies. <laughs> we burn everything. <laughs> yeah. In Romania, all representations are effigies. Yeah, they do. They do? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they throw away like, the um, after January 6th. Time to burn some bands. Yeah. 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 They throw away all their Christmas trees on January 6th. Oh, it's and Easter the time. Time to burn some bands. And pick up all the thrown, up, <laughs> the thrown away Christmas trees and then they use them for firewood. <laughs> No, that's different. That's not the same as... Yeah. It's not like January 10th, it's like Effigy Day or something. No. Oh, well, that's nice. No, but they, yeah, I guess... They it's not like January 10th, Do they 10th have like holidays Day in America where you do burn an effigy? Um, uh, hold on, I'm gonna try to think of a good joke. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. No, but there's no um, answer, so I'm wondering. Uh, hold on. In England, we have it. It's Guy Fawkes Day, like or we had it when, when I was I know, in No, but there's no good answer, so I wanted to remember the 5th of November. But I can't think of one, mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. no. And I never got it. I never got if we were supposed to hate him or not. Because <laughs> the way the people talk about him is he's a hero because he didn't sell out his comrades. And then, anyway, never mind. He's also a traitor. You're, you're opening up a whole. There now the whole comment section is going to be Guy Fawkes, hero or villain. You're, you're opening up a whole. The, there the now the whole comment section is going to be Guy Fawkes, hero or I'm villain. I'm far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so my is <laughs> see the problem is everyone shouted. No. We just have different levels of, yeah, I, like, so my childhood was fine. See, the problem like is everyone's childhood but everyone, you sucks. Know, we just like have different levels of, like, it's great. Bad. Like, compared to a lot of you guys, my childhood is great. Yeah. But everyone, you know, it's so, like the bar yeah. changes and your standards for what's good never, and what's bad changes with them. <laughs> it, it's like a roller coaster, guys. So, you know. That's, well, that's the thing. If you've never, if you, it, yeah. it's like a roller coaster, guys. It doesn't matter how high or, or low you are. It, the ups and downs always feel the same. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> my parents burnt me. My parents burnt uh, I, I had uh, severe severe burns in my childhood. Why did you go through so next Scrooge? My, my uncle walked around with the hot dog. <laughs> Do you like Scrooge now, or do you have like a thing where you, my, you can't stand him still? Do you have a Scrooge a fetish? On a <laughs> <laughs> As a way of overcoming past trauma. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember old people. I, know, I think I've been spoken of like creepy old people. And now you have the hands! I, I remember old people being the thing that scared me the most for Sorry, most of my what? childhood. What movie? Have you ever seen the movie Pet Cemetery? You ever watched Pet Cemetery? Uh, you ever seen I that so. movie? Nothing about the people coming back or like animals. Have you ever seen none the none movie Pet Cemetery? When they have like a scene of like some flashback of someone. Nothing about like the people grandma, coming back to or, or like animals coming back. To, none of that was scary. When they had like a scene what, of what like about some it flashback of the someone caring for the like their old grandma old that and they how had old to they were. Terrified me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the old part. It reminded me of like. Uh, no. Oh, so it did get to you. <laughs> Every kid should be terrified. Scrooge. I think kids should constantly be terrified. It makes them think more. It makes the world a more magical place. 
<laughs> I, I imagine how you would redesign this. It makes the world a more magical place. <laughs> Fear. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the most memorable things about Disneyland are the parts where it's like a little, little scary, little like when you're a kid. You well, know, I feel like a lot of the most memorable things, things like about Disneyland are the parts where it's like, like a little, a little scary, little, little like, like when you're a kid, part. you know, Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean when there's like a little drop. <laughs> I've never been. Like Dead Men Tell, tell No Tales. Like that's the most memorable part. You should Roller coaster, ups and downs. We're all on the same level, right? There. Oh God! I'm sorry. I went to Disneyland a lot as a kid. Roller coaster, ups and downs. We're all on the same level, right, guys? Like riding above you. We're just on a little level. <laughs> no. I'm sitting on the top, and you guys. My, this is because my roller coaster is like riding above you. <laughs> and I was just on a little double go to the. Coaster, and I'm sitting on we the never top went to the inside. You know, like okay, so we had this theme other. park thing called right, Playland, right. but it was right in the, it, it cost money to go inside, so we didn't go inside. But we got to watch the other kids go inside because outside there was a free area, uh, and sometimes they had like dog shows and stuff. No. So we could go to the dog show, but we couldn't go into the rides. So we would watch the other kids have fun. Oh god, no! <laughs> One time, one time, we were getting we were getting chicken nuggets, and. And there was a vein oh god no oh that's gross that's we scary one time, one time we were getting free chicken nuggets <laughs> in school and there was a vein in one there was a vein is that true there was a You're vein in Romania your chicken nuggets veins, <laughs> veins are dead well, that's <laughs> pretty gross <laughs> do you Dude, my, my roller coaster is very sad <laughs> Yeah, it traumatized me for life. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds pretty gross. See, my oh, my roller coaster is that. very that sad. Mean. I didn't yeah. Eat KFC for like a good ten years after that. Why would you eat KFC anyway? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't eat KFC for like a good ten years. <laughs> it used to taste better. It used to taste better when we were kids. I don't so know, when you're a kid, old. trash tastes good. There's <laughs> that I am. But when anyone eats keeps like, people eat. When are you gonna make a kids show cynic? Just teach them things. Okay. When you're a child, Kids are trash little taste trash good. monsters. Kids just eat trash all day. And they love it. <laughs> it's true. Kids love eating trash. That's my understanding. Kids are interesting creatures. They love being scared and they love eating trash. You don't have to throw away trash anymore. That's my understanding of things. I can't wait to have a kid. I've been eating all the trash. Uh, you don't have to throw away trash There's anymore. There's so much we can't talk yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. I'll just say this, Cynix. One of us actually did eat trash. <laughs> yeah, no. Roller coaster guys. Roller coaster? Remember the roller coaster? I'm going to be here on the top. Oh, God, no. Roller coaster guys. <laughs> Roller coaster? <laughs> you remember the roller coaster. Uh, I'm I'm up here on the top, but I'm I'm in the struggle with you guys. Like a white uh, male uh, identifying as whatever. white privilege. White privilege. No, but white man. Single white male. Not because he's not single anymore. But whatever. Like oh, the privilege class. I'm I'm traumatized too. I, I went through stuff. This scum. <laughs> But maybe this is his trauma. Yeah. Like, oh, I yeah. got, what are you, 34 now? Yeah. Yeah. I remember being a kid know. and being like, feeling like an outsider because I was the only one among my friends whose parents were divorced. Remember? I remember oh, being a kid and being like feeling like an outsider yeah. because I was the only one among my friends whose parents were Is this were real or it's a story? <laughs> oh, this is so sad. Oh, Everyone but, else but not little every kid is like pretty much the, they're all all their parents are divorced, right? Oh god. I'm no. I don't know. I'm, see I'm joking around, but there is like a truth in like everyone's like an arse. I I'm however, I guess I don't know. Like, I'm, see, I'm joking around, but there is like a truth in like yeah. everyone's. I agree, like, I agree with that. Whatever, I agree however with that too. dumb your I don't like, think initial statement. There's a monopoly on sadness. Feel the yeah. same. When you see some like I little just think kid go nuts and... sort of like when you get people talking to each other or I don't know forming groups or communities, when yeah. when they have different thresholds for what I don't know pain or suffering or terror or whatever is. Um, it kind of gets lost in translation because yeah. you, you can't really relate if 
I don't know, somebody's talking about how, you know, their remote control doesn't work and you don't yeah. have running water or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think mean, you guys think you had a wife, but I had like a 56k modem for like most of my childhood. <laughs> I mean, you guys we think you have that, but I have like a 56k modem for like most speeds. of my childhood. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> but people in Romania have really good internet. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think, again, yeah, it comes to what you talk about. Because if you talk about the event, then yeah, it seems like this one's worse. Mm-hmm. But if you just talk about the feelings associated yeah. with it, like, oh, I experienced like, loss. Are, like, ridiculously stupid, but you're feeling. <laughs> Like, the little kid, the kid, Yeah, see, that's the funny kid. part. The yeah, events are, like, ridiculously yeah. stupid, so, but the feelings... Like, the little kid, the spoiled like, kid who's been spoiled know, their whole life and didn't get an iPhone for Christmas, <laughs> they feel just as horrible as the kid who got, like, I don't know. Is that true, Bob? <laughs> oh, God, no! <laughs> Bob, you're oh, God, no! Oh, God, no! Should, should we end this? Yeah. All right. All should, right. We should put it out of its misery. All right. Well, thank you, Cynics, for all your insights. Yeah. Um, it was very enjoyable and entertaining oh, and educational. Yeah. Um, I hope the people watching oh, got something out of this. Thank you to my special guests, Flavia and Bob. <laughs> yeah, we're a rarity. Yeah. Isn't that a pony? Pronounced <laughs> Lavia. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks to the viewers. I wish Bob and, uh, I like Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>